All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Amarillo Branch and NAACP, we'd just like to welcome you all to our general membership meeting today on Saturday, September 11th, 2021. I'd like to call this meeting to order here at one o'clock p.m. And if we could please move into an invocation uh, led by our third vice president, uh, Mr. Hobart Gunny Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Sorry. Please bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for allowing us to gather here today as one group, a group of individuals who wants to not change the world, but at least try to make it a better in each of our own little corner. Dear Heavenly Father, today is a day of somber, a, a day of remembrance. There are individuals today, are children that are now adults that, uh, that this day was a sad day for them. Please. Heavenly Father, give them peace today as they go on about their day. And as I heard today, let's make this day a, not the day of arguments with people, but a day that we turn the cheek and be blessed for what we have today. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that invitation, Mr. Third Vice President. Um, we're moving on to old business. Our branch participated in the Texas State Conference quarterly meeting in August and received updates regarding redistricting, voter suppression, which is now law in Texas, and COVID-19 protocols. So um, just be aware of that. Our branch elected delegates and aldermen to participate in the upcoming 84th Texas State Conference NAACP State Convention. And our branch agreed to sponsor a team to compete in the charity golf event hosted by Panhandle Breast Health. Uh, so uh, concludes the old business, unless there are any other uh, discussions. I'll, I'll only mention that uh, Pride of Panhandle uh, Golf Club has accepted and will be, uh, will be manning that, the, that team, staffing that team with four people. And they're going to have a second team as well uh, that I believe is gonna be sponsored by American Land Title. So. Oh, wow. Thank you for that update, Chairman Glover. That's wonderful news. Happy that we can partner with them. All right, moving into a new business. Um, the, there will be an Amarillo Housing Town Hall event uh, held virtually on Saturday, September 25th, 2021. Uh, our Housing Committee Chairwoman, uh, Kay Peachin, uh, will be hosting that event and we'll have uh, representatives from the city and other nonprofits throughout our city who specialize in housing. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of movement in that area with the uh, Supreme Court uh, ending the more eviction moratorium, and we're now seeing landlords uh, move their tenants out in a pretty expeditious fashion. So what, how that affects uh, not just adults, but children who are enrolled in our public school system, uh, those topics will be discussed during that virtual town hall discussion, and we will post uh, that video uh, later that day so that uh, it is widely disseminated and we'll have quite answers to the questions that you may have. And the next topic is uh, just, you know, uh, reminding you all that the Panel Breast Health Tea for Tatas Golf Tournament is on Saturday, September 26th, or uh, so I believe that may be Sunday, September 26th, 2021 at uh, Comanche Trail Golf Course. And we are glad to have, uh, you know, the team that was assembled together by Pride of the Panhandle Golf Club. Uh, but there will be other teams there and there are various sponsors for this event. And it's just a great way to ensure that we are investing in women's health. There will be an Amarillo Women's March on Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. I don't personally have any details on that other than just to give you the date. I don't know if anyone else has anything for that. If you do, please feel free to share. Only that uh, if, if anyone's looking for details, they can go to womensmarch.org uh, and it, it's an officially sanctioned mark with the, march with the national organization there. Okay, good. And we can certainly uh, share information regarding that leading up to October 2nd on our branch media. Uh, the North Heights rezoning uh, part two or phase two of that will be voted by the city council on Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. Currently, as 
we are made aware of. Uh, you all in the community are aware of the fact that phase one, part one, uh, was approved in a vote three to two, uh, but we still have a lot of work to do and a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, my understanding of the situation is that uh, per our economic development chairwoman, Mildred Darden, uh, when they canvass the neighborhood uh, and the section for part two of the North Heights rezoning plan, they had absolutely no objection to the rezoning initiative. However, when they pre presented that information to the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, they voted it down. They opposed part two uh, because they felt like it was still a little bit of a government overreach. Nevertheless, the city council, uh, who we elect uh, and off you know, off year uh, elections on the municipal level, they are slated to vote on this issue on October 12th. So leading up to that, just know that the Emerald Branch NAACP will continue to solicit support for the full passage of North Heights rezoning. And we will uh, disseminate uh, the template that uh, community members could use to uh, submit uh, their letters to members of the Emerald City Council. Does anyone have anything to add on that? Okay, um, today is obviously a very somber day as our third vice president, uh, Gunny, had mentioned in the invocation. It's Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance and Observation. We obviously know that uh, there have been a lot of events and we'll still have a few events going around town and throughout our uh, circle of the world uh, pertaining to September 11th, uh, 20 years marks. Uh, that, that tragic day, uh, we all woke up and our lives were forever changed. And whether you had family there uh, in, in New York or Pennsylvania uh, or DC, uh, you, we were all greatly affected by that. Uh, so I just wanted to offer some time if folks wanted to share some of their um, thoughts on this day, I wanted to provide you with the opportunity to share those thoughts. I'd share something that I had the privilege of witnessing on that day. Um, I, I was working with American Airlines at their headquarters on that day. And uh, as you know, the first plane to strike the tower was an American Airlines uh, aircraft. Many of the people that I was working with realized as, as time went on that they knew people on the flight crew or they knew people who were on that, that, that plane. Um, and, and later in the day, I, I realized that one of the uh, senior vice presidents for my, my own company had been on the plane. Uh, but um, I was with Sun Microsystems at the time. But what I saw was, and this is something that happens with every single incident uh, where an aircraft goes down that I wasn't aware of until I saw this. But throughout that organization, uh, American Airlines, throughout that organization, people in management all the way up to, uh, you know, executive level volunteer their time uh, to work with families, uh, to work with recovery for anyone affected by, by any sort of aircraft incident, any sort of downing. Um, and so they, they actually, a day later, were packing up and uh, getting ready to leave. Of course, as you know, things were grounded and it was difficult to travel. But you know, as, as they were available, people were, were moving off their normal work uh, to switch into a different mode uh, that was all about uh, the people affected. And that's not something that was just on that day. That's something that happens every time there's an incident. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing, Chairman Glover. Um, I didn't know you had such a close uh, connection to that day and uh, we obviously, you know, our hearts are just, you know, sometimes overwhelmed with, you know, moments like this. Uh, I can personally remember being a sixth grade student and in between my math class and going into my language arts class, um, what was odd was that the television sets that were in each classroom, they were actually on and it wasn't channel one news, I mean, um, it was just the live broadcast of the events of that day. And um, in the halls, there were so many of my classmates that were just crying and 
you know, by the time I mentioned, made it to my uh, language arts classroom, I saw that second plane hit that second tower. I just froze. Um, and we didn't know what to think there at, you know, as sixth graders, 11 years old, maybe, you know, but we knew that nothing would ever be the same. And I know that, you know, caused several of my friends uh, to actually enlist later when they were eligible. And, but it certainly gave us all this clearing call to serve our nation in a greater capacity uh, when we had the chance and at, and, and at whatever level whenever we were adults. Uh, so we just continue to take that with us uh, throughout our adult lives. Uh, would anyone else like to share? I remember uh, I was on my way to work, uh, listening to, like in Dallas, I worked for Nordstrom's. And I remember the, the uh, I guess it wasn't hip hop radio, but whatever the, you know, the radio station that was on at the time. And they interrupted and I could hear them telling us, you know, about a plane, you know, crashing. And I thought that, okay, you know, they're just kind of doing some kind of show on the radio. And so, but I flipped over to uh, NPR to make sure I got real information. And, and sure enough, you know, that was, um, you know, really happening. And the thing that was, and all of us were driving on the highway at that time, you could just feel this collective, even though we were driving, uh, there was just this collective kind of feeling. And, you know, some of us kind of looked at each other as we were driving by. And I just kind of remember thinking, oh my God, we're at war, you know? Mm. We've never had, you know, I, you know, I wasn't around for um, when Japan, uh, you know, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? When Japan attacked, you know, Hawaii. And so this was my first feeling that we could actually be at war, that somebody, that they had invaded us. And, uh, and then I went to work and we stayed open for the public and customers were coming in and we were all talking and, you know, passing out water and, uh, and just kind of went on quietly with our day, so. Uh, my goodness, thank you for sharing that, that right here. Uh, yeah. Does anyone else have anything to share? Uh, yes, yeah. third Vice President Gunny. Well, that day I was stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I was, uh, I was the lead instructor for uh, the Combat Engineer School. And at that moment, I was in the process of doing a, a gunny investigation. We had an issue. So I was trying to find out, I was trying to get to the bottom of the issue. So I had over 200 Marines out in the, out in the sun. And let's just say I wouldn't miss the nice guy. My, my clerk comes up to me and uh, whispers into my ear and let me know what's going on. And then uh, the commanding officer comes up and we go talk for a little while. And after I get done, I, I tell the Marines, I said, all right, who's from New York City? They raise their hand. I said, go with Lance Corporal. They leave. I tell the other Marines, I said, um, the tower's been hit. The only thing we can do now is continue the train. And that was a moment that um, I had to go from basically being their wor worst nightmare to their father figure. And I still remember, you know, as we marched down to the demo range, it was, um, and some people advised us not to do demo that day because of, of the tower, but we went ahead and did it. We usually sing and march and everything, but that day we just did a silent march and everything. And I remember getting down there. The Marines seemed to have a purpose that day. There wasn't a lot of joking, wasn't a lot of horse playing and everything. They, they, they knew that there was going to be a mission from that. And <clears throat> towards the end of the day, 
almost every staff NCO that we had was requesting orders back to the, out of the schoolhouse. I didn't request orders. Me and a couple other ones and people said, well, why come you, why come you not requesting orders there, uh, Corporal, I mean, Getty Brown? And I said, you know, I've been to Panama, I've been to Somalia and I've been to Desert Storm. It's somebody else's turn to do this. And you know, that was the beginning of Afghanistan. And that's one reason I retired in 2004, three years later was that, you know, it's, it became a time when it was, it was somebody else's mission. It, it was somebody else's mission. And, 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 and I look back on it and, and one of the hardest thing to do that when you're an instructor, especially when you got second lieutenants that are so eager, so eager to go somewhere and shoot. And they don't realize that the individuals are shooting back. You know, I, I, got, I got a nice little medal and uh, tags on my vehicle that, uh, that proves that they shoot back. But then at Camp Lejeune, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some soul searching here right now. This but is your camp, time. You're, but, you're an American hero. You know. but, but, at, but at Camp Lejeune, where um, the population of the city is about 70,000 and 50,000 of them are Marines. Wow. You know, if one young man get killed over there, the first week he's on the front page. Towards the end of the war, there was a footnote on the last page. And then I moved back here to Amarillo where people really care about our veterans. You can say what you want to about it, but, but people do, and, and, it, and it does me, does me good. Um, even though I had to give the bad news that day, I have never watched a video of the towers getting hit. I have never watched a news article, news footage of it. Um, for that whole week, I did not watch TV. I drowned it myself in a instructing the Marines because I wanted them to be ready for their next mission and everything. So, I mean, it's, it's a very hard day. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, these, these, these firemen and police, police officers, they don't get the credit they, they, they deserve. They, they don't. I mean, there's a picture to, and it's, it's not because I ride a motorcycle, but my favorite picture from that day is that when that fireman showed up in, on his Harley, in his gear, and it was his day off. He rode his Harley there. So, I mean, I can go on and on about this, but because it's, it's very touching to me. It's, it's very, very touching to me that, you know, I, I, I lost a lot of good friends and a lot of students that I trained to go over there to Afghanistan and for lack of better words in retaliation, but if I had to do it all over again, I would. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me a reason to serve. Yes, sir. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Well, I would just share. I, I also want to thank you, Gunny Brown, for, for your service. And um, I was exercising by walking in Westgate Mall. I had just retired two, three years ago, and that was what I would do in the mornings was go out and walk. And they had a TV set up near Sears on the outside, uh, not outside the building, but and not inside of Sears. And it caught my attention as I was walking by. And I stopped and I watched as the um, the plane hit the first tower and then I just stayed there and people started gathering and there wasn't a word said. Everyone was just so quiet. And then how many minutes was it? Someone who knows could tell me that. But then the second plane went into the second tower and it, it took a while for me for it to really sink in that this really happened. And it happened in a place where I had visited before. Mm -hmm. And that these were real people that were, you know, doing the deed and 
real people who were in the building. And although I didn't have anyone in my family who was in any one of those buildings or who died as a result of that, um, I, I felt a big, big loss. And, you know, now that we have withdrawn from Afghanistan, I'm wondering if, it, if we were really meant to go there for 20 years or not, and, and I have some doubts that that was really in God's will. It was, anyway, I, I know that it, we had to retaliate, and I do understand that. And it, it just has broken my heart over the years of how many young men and young women have lost their lives while they were in Afghanistan or in other places serving, or they have come back with injuries that changed their lives forever, or, or PTSD that changes their lives forever. And, you know, I, I'm an old woman, and there's not a whole lot I can do to change that. But if I can learn of something that I can do to make things better, I would like to do it. And, and it's just my opinion that we are all in this together. And I'm just so glad to be here. This is my first meeting that I've been able to attend. And I'm so happy and proud to be here. And I thank my friend Nathalie for giving me the numbers so that I could get on Zoom and be here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your perspective and thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're here and involved as a member. Um, before we close this thing down the journey, does anyone else have anything to share? Okay, well, I'll just say that, you know, there were, there were heroes who were first responders who uh, were obviously first on the scene who suffered significantly um, and families that were affected uh, long beyond that day. Uh, there were heroes that were civilians that were just looking after their friend, colleague or complete strangers. Uh, let's not forget that when we are brought to our knees as a nation, we always, always throughout the test of time have found a way to get back up. America finds a way to rise each time. Nothing and no one has the power to break our indivisible connection to one another. And as long as we remain true to who we are and honor the, the legacies of love and of selfless devotion to one another, as those who tragically gave all in service to their fellow men on September 11th, those who rushed the cockpit, who were able to reroute a plane so that it landed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, those who were able to reroute a plane instead of hitting the White House or a Capitol. You know, we, we, we obviously cherish and honor the lives of those lost, but we want to continue those legacies of love and selfless devotion to one another. And the best way to do that is to be involved in the work that we each do every single day. And the work with the Amelon Branch and NAACP continues to be done within the committees uh, that are part of this organization. And those of you who are part of those committees, thank you very much for being part of our all-inclusive nonpartisan nonprofit organization. And thank you for your commitment to ensuring that the greatest ideals of the United States of America, of our constitutional republic, uh, continue to be fulfilled through the work that you do each day. Uh, so unless anyone has anything else to say, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. I got second it. Got a move, got a move. Well, uh, we got Brown here. The motion uh, looks like Chairman Glover wants to second. 
Uh, any opposition, any debate or discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Until we meet again, God bless and keep you all. Thank you for being part of the Admiral Branch NAACP. Thank all you. All right, you wonderful people. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Mary. See you Thursday. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. <laughs>